Ladies and gents, welcome to your reaction. This is Irish Potato Famine Black 47 1947 Extra Shit Part 3 by the channel Extra Credits. Oh, yeah, he said in the previous video this is gonna be even worse. So, that's the depressing video for you. Watching the Irish suffer from the view of London, Sir Charles Trevelyan believed that the Potato Famine was part of God, of course, he did. Part of God's will. Inspired by the meritocracy-based philosophy of starvation that Thomas Malthus held, Trevelyan created a relief plan with the sole goal of protecting the market and not the people. That's a fucking trend, right? <clears throat> Look, uh, this is really effed up, right? Like I said in the previous video, Ireland is not some African, poor African country, where if some stories like this appear where people just point blank starved, you see that you feel horrified by then you say it's in Africa and you kind of understand it like, okay, it's in Africa. Ireland in 19th century under British Empire, people starving because, you know, people entire villages dying because they starved to death because of a famine and people in London basically doing this shit is just horrifying. Now, okay, anything I say about, you know, people in London and British Empire at the time, I'm not condemning entire British people. That's what lots of people think when I say it, right? I see in the comments and things. I'm not blaming entire population. That's just stupid. I'm talking about people in power, right? I would never blame entire people for anything because that would be just stupid. I'm blaming the people in power. And this is just effed up, right? Ireland, part of British Empire, dying left and right like this because of a potato famine. Potato famine because they relied on potato because... You know, the British Empire basically forced everybody out of their land and, you know, struck them into a level of poverty that they cannot afford anything else but potato, right? Potato was their main source of food and they're dying because of that. At least, you know, the people in London could have some decency to acknowledge that, like, we are the reason behind this at, at a certain extent. At least we can provide relief. Or let's watch this one. July, 1846. Ireland's early summer harvest is starting to come in. Reports of blight circulate, but in the east, summer has been temperate. The hunger might be over. Lightning rends the sky. Water drops like a guillotine. An unhealthy fog blankets the land, and upon seeing it, one fisherman tells a newspaper that it's the wrath of the fairies. I knew it by the signs they were coming. And perhaps he's not far off, because a tiny, malicious organism is riding the rain. The water washes fungus spores off the infected leaves, carrying it to the ground. And under the soil, the 1846 potato crop begins to decay. Okay, this might be a stupid thing to say since I don't know anything about agriculture at all. And, you know, uh, so, but I'm saying this, that if after the previous year's disaster where everything just got infected and they knew that this year's crop is done why didn't they just do something like scorched earth type of mentality where they burned everything to make sure there is no virus left around basically so when the next time we uh, do the harvest it, it would be surety that there is no virus around right burn off leaves and everything trees and whatever whatever they can find around the farmland so they could make sure the next time something like that could happen but maybe at the time, they didn't know where the virus is coming from, right? That was the case. In January 1846, Daniel O'Connell had stood in Parliament and warned that Peel was not doing enough to fight the famine. There are five million people on the verge of starvation, he warned. And I'm speaking from the depth of my conviction when I say, I believe the result of neglect will be death to an enormous amount. Now, eight months later, Peel was gone. And the government was doing even less. Hunger began pulling Ireland apart. Mothers starved until their milk gave out and their babies died. God Men damn. See, that kind of sentence just pisses me off. What the fuck? That just puts a visual in my head, which I don't like. That's just effed up. The food depots and public work projects found sucker in neither. Orders had been given to food depots to preserve their grain until December. It didn't matter. People arrived at the depots on foot, shoeless, having not eaten in days. Depots relented and passed out cornmeal, but their reserves were getting low. Gangs of men carrying shovels marched into market towns demanding work. Food availability was not the problem. 
Amid the famine, bread sat in shop windows, and Irish merchants exported tons of beef, grain, and oats to England. The government refused to intervene. So, across... Look, in today's time, if something like this happens in the country, first thing any government would do is make sure that exports stop since the country is starving. Right, that will be the first thing that happens. Preserving, you know, food source for your own country first before doing the exports. Government will intervene immediately, regardless of which country it is. So at the time, basically, when people are dying because of starvation and because there's a famine going on, transporting food out of Ireland into basically, uh, you know, England, it's just effed up, right? It's inhumane act. Your people are starving while these merchants are making profit by, you know, basically exporting food like that. The island, starving peasants did instead. In County Waterford, an armed militia blocked two barges that were transporting Irish grain for export. That done, they moved into the town. Makes beating sense. Merchants stealing bread and lighting buildings afire. A unit of dragoons ordered them to disperse. When they didn't, the soldiers opened fire. Six bodies lay in the Whoa. street. Yet, as Ireland reeled towards famine, in London, Sir Charles Trevelyan was retooling his relief plan to be less generous. Trevelyan was a legend in the civil service, incorruptible, pious, and hardworking. But he was also a workaholic micromanager, steeped in the Victorian belief that poverty was the sign of moral failure. To Trevelyan, the Irish problem, the fact that Ireland remained trapped in a cycle of poverty, violence, and rebellion, lay in the Irish character. They were lazy, rebellious, and took no initiative, he thought. Potato cultivation was too easy, only requiring a few months' labor a year, breeding idleness. And it was prone to failure. And when it failed... Ah, look at those iris, right? Lazy, farming potatoes because that's the easiest thing. Not because all our reforms and things, and we took their land and we struck them into a level of poverty that the only thing they could afford is potatoes. No, it's because they're lazy, right? Not that it's famine going around. Oh, it's just because they are so lazy and bad all around, so they are struggling. Look, if shit like this happens today, there will be people in the United States, Germany, in different places of the world fundraising for the island, right? And would condemn the hell out of England for doing this. This is that level of inhumane shit. And don't give me that, you know, it was a different time. Every time I make some statement, there's somebody in the comments just saying it's a different time. Look, I don't care if it's, you know, two, two centuries ago, you know, basically in 10th century or even in the Greek time. Certain things are inhumane regardless of time, right? I was making Genghis Khan video about, you know, reacting to Genghis Khan video of extra credits. And I, was, you know, I said basically how abandoning family by the tribe is really fucked up. And somebody said it's a different time. That's not an excuse, right? Cultural differences is... Up, you know about right when it comes to different time not certain inhumane acts right something is barbaric and it just is doesn't matter which time the irish turned to government to feed them absent or neglectful irish landowners shouldered little of the cost and london feared that the irish were becoming habitually dependent on government aid to save ireland it's he a thought, famine. it needed modernization and agricultural reform he dreamed of an anglicized Ireland, like the one that existed in its cities and market towns. One with English-style capitalism and a market economy, like theirs, to serve as a trade partner. He wanted to sweep out Ireland's communal village life and barter system, replacing it with a workforce that worked for wages rather than potatoes. One where they earned money to buy food. Trevelyan saw this blight not as a disaster, but a godsend opportunity to remake Irish society. And he was determined to make the most of it, no matter how much suffering he had to inflict. That economy and everything sucks because you people basically, you know, uh, banned Catholics from taking education and becoming lawyers and lots of shit. Right? Religious persecution at some level. And now you say, okay, they are just farmers. What if they are like us? Yeah, you restricted that a long time ago. Great guy. In fact... Trevelyan had studied under the economist Thomas Malthus, who argued that when a population outstripped food production, starvation and death was a natural and proper correction. When Malthus put forth the theory, he was thinking of Ireland, and Trevelyan agreed. Ugh, what an asshole, right? You hear lots of people like that. I mean, look, at core of things, it kind of makes sense when you see the broader picture. Like, if certain communities you know, or populate themselves, then their food is there, it's kind of their fault. 
but it's, re it's really shitty to say it like that, right? The way he said it, because if it was reversed like that, if England was suffering like that, right? And, you know, if England had food shortages, he would be the first guy to run towards to find aid, like somebody help me out. And he's saying like that, okay, it's, it's uh, the, if a community suffers because they have food shortages and, uh, you know, because their population is high, you know, it's a right thing to happen that people starve and everything go back to normal. That's a really shitty way of saying. I'm not blaming that community. First of all, not ignoring the famine. I'm pretty sure his idea was before famine. So with his idea, you know, understand that it's community's fault to basically overpopulate and basically creating food issues. But it's a really shitty thing for you to just point that out and not do anything. You are a bigger asshole if you don't help around. I mean, they are the morons. The community is a moron to overpopulate. I understand that. But not helping them out, you are even bigger moron and an asshole. That belief in Malthusian principles, alongside a commitment to non-intervention in the free market, would plunge Ireland deep into famine. So when Trevelyan rolled out his reformed relief plan, it was no surprise that its primary mission was not to feed the starving, but instead to protect the free market, prevent abuse, and teach economic lessons. When food Nobody just went to that guy and said, asshole, this is not the time to, I guess, reform our entire communities and economics. Right now, there's a famine going on, right? It's not a food shortage only. It's a food shortage because of famine. This is special times. He pose reopened. The poor found that the cornmeal was no longer sold at cost. That, argued Trevelyan, undercut local merchants. Now, it was market price. All food depots would close, except those in the West. And Trevelyan insisted that any maize purchased come from British merchants, not American ones. When the public works began again, job seekers discovered their new wages were based on performance rather than a flat daily fee. And even the highest wages couldn't feed a family. The wages themselves were supposedly funded via attacks on Irish landlords, but many landlords had little to spare. And due to multiple levels of bureaucracy... See, this is Stalin-level shit, right? What happened in, you know, communist Russia, in the Soviet Union, when Stalin was around. Regardless of how much effort you put in, you don't even have money to feed your family. That's just fucked up. This is that level of shit. Meant to prevent fraud, the road crew's wages often took weeks to arrive. And finally, there would be no intervention in food prices. Laissez-faire economics would rule. High prices, Trevelyan argued, would attract food imports. But, you guessed it, they didn't. In fact, food prices had soared higher than ever. It had been a bad year for agriculture, and not just in Ireland. Crops failed across Europe. Countries scrambled to import extra food. And Trevelyan was late to refill his cornmeal. So by the time he grudgingly started looking, there was little to be had. And in Ireland, potato and cornmeal prices doubled. At government food depots, hungry people arrived from miles away, only to find the maize unaffordable. Across the island, small farmers and landless agricultural workers were plunged into immediate destitution. They surged into market towns to beg for food at depots, and they even began entering the hated workhouses. A government poor relief program best described as a prison for the poor, where they lived while performing mindless work in exchange for two meals a day. And workhouses were abusive and inhumane by design, so the poor would only enter as a last resort. Yet even they were over capacity. Despite the people's desperation, landlords upped the eviction rate, calling in police and soldiers to throw families out and demolish their homes with the sledgehammer and crowbar. Tenants killed livestock in retribution, and on occasion, ambushed and murdered landlords. Evicted families wandered the roads, pitching tents and ditches. Crime rates doubled. If you take advantage of people who are suffering because of something like famine, you shouldn't be surprised if they're reward like that. This was the season of the gunman. And it wasn't just the small tenant farmers and landless laborers showing up at the food depots. Managers reported small landowners, 10 to 15 acre men, approaching them to request aid, fine clothes hanging off their skeletal frames. One had even walked 12 miles to an unfamiliar town rather than reveal to his neighbors that he'd gone bankrupt. Blight compounded everything. In small farms, barley rotted in the field. Usually farmers paid laborers to harvest, but they had neither money nor potatoes to offer. And as if that wasn't enough, that winter, a series of blizzards ravaged the island, snow stacking to the rooftops, entombing whole villages. 
Soon, the new year dawned on what would be known as Black 47. January brought a strange frenzy. Families, hollowed-eyed and losing hair, stumbled to the shore to eat seaweed and oysters. What the fuck? They scaled 300-foot cliffs just to steal bird eggs. They could have survived off fish, but they had neither the equipment, boats, nor skill for deep water fishing. And by that time, most of the fishermen had pawned their nets for cornmeal. Armed gangs ambushed government food convoys and butchered stolen cattle. What I don't understand is this is in the 19th century, right? It's just, you know, uh, two centuries ago, less than two centuries ago. So at that time, how did any other country didn't see this and just said that this is inhumane shit and just, I don't know, uh, intervene at some level? This is just, because in today, that's what would happen. If today this happened, every fucking single country would intervene because this is that level of stupidity, right? How can somebody be that level of greedy? Is uh, It's inconceivable, basically. Because everybody is suffering in the entire country and still people in London is not giving aid, right? They're just blaming the Irish people. First of all, they are like, okay, Irish people are lazy. Irish people needs to pick up their game and actually be productive. Uh, during the famine when they don't have anything and our reforms basically push them down they can't do anything they can't even afford food even if they put all effort into it they still should you know uh, basically pick up their game and then they're surprised when they basically revolt and just basically rob people like that uh, even the people they you know uh, basically landlords you know even they didn't understand that this is special uh, time where uh, there's a famine going on. People can't, barely are surviving. This is not the time to show my greed, right? Around this time, people would expect that, you know, landlords should ease out a bit. In instead, they double down. They increase the money in everything. It shouldn't be surprising that people are rebelling. Battle to survive. By the end of January, 700,000 had turned to working on public works. These famine roads were often a waste. They started nowhere and went nowhere. Malnourished work gangs broke rocks in freezing temperatures. Their shoes and coats long ago lost to the pawn shop. And they died there, in great what numbers, the fuck? collapsing beside the roads from exhaustion. Violence against public works managers became so pervasive that many deserted their posts, while others, laden with guilt, ended their own lives. In a famine, it's not the starvation that kills you, it's the diseases that follow. Typhus, dysentery, fever, and the famine dropsy. Peasants fleeing the countryside carried them into cities, and infection ran so rampant in workhouses, the staff began to quit. Visitors and officials reported seeing villages where the want was so extreme that families lacked the energy to even bury their dead. What the, the fuck? The Irish funeral, so embodied in the culture, disappeared piece by piece. No one wanted to gather for fear of the fevers. None could afford a coffin. And eventually, even individual graves were dispensed with. Dogs scavenged the burial fields. Amid that landscape of horror, one place stood out as particularly destitute. Skibbereen, in County Cork, became internationally famous for its deplorable conditions. Drought exacerbated the famine. And after a few months, the frantic scramble to survive had passed, leaving only a lethargic wait for the grave. Families crawled across their cabins, too weak to even walk, and a visiting American found himself in a surreal conversation with two young women, as they casually calculated how many days they had left to live. Fourteen, they agreed. Accounts from Skibbereen made the village internationally famous, the face of the great hunger, and its ghoulish tales, repeated in newspapers, inspired people around the globe to raise money for famine relief. Donations Finally. came from as far away as Australia. And in the United States, even enslaved people and Native Americans raised funds for Ireland. <laughs> what? <laughs> in the United States, people who are slaves are, you know, basically sc scouring money to help Irish people. While the British Empire is doing this shit. I've heard a lots of fucked up things British Empire did. But to me, this is one of the worst things they ever did. Because who they did to, how close they are, right? And how the slaves in the United States are gathering money to help them out while British people are not doing that. The international outcry finally pushed Trevelyan to act. For months, he downplayed the increasingly urgent and alarming reports from his own officers on the ground. 
even when they'd rebelled against his policies, selling cornmeal at cost or serving free meals at workhouses. He relented. The British government would support outdoor relief, the opening of soup kitchens and free meal distribution. But it was too little, too late. Deep famine had already affected the planting season, and the next crop would be poor. Many Irish decided they only had two options, either fight for Ireland or leave it. Fucking hell. People like Trevelyan should be put on trial to playing with lives like that at the times like this. Imagine if shit like this happened last year, what we went through. People were dying left and right, it was locked down all around, and if this kind of inhumane thing happened last year, imagine what would we feel like? What would be the uproar of that? This is just effed up. When I, when I heard about Irish potato famine, I thought it would just be some famine that basically destroyed the entire country at a certain level. I didn't know that it was because of the negligence of British Empire like that. Alright people, that was fucking depressing. This was Iris Potato Famine, Black 47, Extra Ship Part 3. If you like my extended film, like and subscribe. Check out the Rick Sunday, there's a link in the description. Check out the cards and cards. And yeah, I'll see you next time.